when you're talking to someone, that's normal for them. They've had that, that all their life. They're surprised when someone doesn't have that. So the moon implies this effect on your home and on your security. You're affected by the past, by mom, by home, by whatever, whether you get, whether you're secure or not secure, whether you've been supported or not. It all has this effect. And that motivational effect, if you were adopted or you were broken away from mom or something like that, those are on prime and moon's hitting the icy. It's going to have a primal effect. If it's squaring, conjuncting, or opposed the icy, it's also going to oppose the midheaven. So the two kind of work together. The one's trying to pass it to the other. And the midheaven is trying to dump it on the icy, and the icy is trying to prove it to the midheaven. Okay. We'll probably be able to go a little deeper into these things when we get into the natal interpretations and we're dealing with individual situations. But for now, we just got to go through each planet and, and the angles. So hitting, hitting the right now the icy. So if Mercury is there, it's not your memory, not your feelings, not your past. It's your mind. It's how you think. It's how you make sense of things. It's your coordination. It's your alertness to things. So if Mercury is going to hit the icy, conjunct, square, opposed. I mean, the good aspects, not having a stressful aspect is basically good. The good aspects have a little more smoothness to it. And they're, they're nice. But really, if it doesn't have a bad aspect, it's good. If it has a bad aspect. So... You don't need to really define it, the edge of where a trine is and no aspect is. There might be a little bit more spontaneousness with the trine or the sextile. But really, you notice the squares, the opposite, and you can work with them to understand someone better and understand what they have to deal with. So Mercury is your thinking. So most prejudice, most distorted thinking, most swear words, most cussing, most mental attitudes come from the family we grew up of come from our parents, they come from the brothers and sisters, our peers, they come from the world we grew up out of. So again, there's a factor is, depending how high Mercury is in the chart, if Mercury is below the horizon, it's going to be your subjective thinking. That's it. the way you think is affected by your motivation, and the motivation is being affected by the way you think and how you live. So that way you make mental judgment and you live, I got to live for this and you try and set it up and you achieve it or you don't and the results come back in and settle in that IC. All the successes and failures come in, but it's your thinking, how you make sense of things, how do you put things, how alert you are to life. So if Mercury conjunct, square, oppose the IC, IC, MC, IC, your thoughts are going to interfere with the peace in the moment. You're going to have to work really hard to control your thoughts to get peace. That's the spiritual work. To find your heart, to slow down the mind. But it doesn't mean the mind is strongly there and creating stress so that it's hard to get to the peace until you can shut down the mind or quieten the mind. But in terms of just thinking in worldly ways, one person might always be talking, one person might always be thinking. They may not talk, but they're thinking about things. Their ideas are, for, they're always thinking about, am I okay, am I there? The mind is that the thinking is really affecting the motivation. It can be challenging it to live right. It can be challenging it to think right. But it could also be challenging it to think wrong. If you get wrong thoughts, you can be motivated by the wrong thoughts and actions will follow thoughts. So the IC is a really powerful point because as soon as it's affected by something, that energy is going to be projected up to the midheaven over time. It's going to be try to be put out, get out of me and put this out. It becomes your motivating factor to get it out of you. So for one person, maybe to motivate, I got to, I got to tell you what I've been going through. I got to say what's happening. I got to talk. I got to express myself to get out of this. And you may not want to listen, but there'll be stress. A person has to stress. They're being pushed to have to do it. Whether a writer might have that, whether someone's expressing or communing themselves, but you might generally too much thinking when you're trying to think about the irrational subjective point in your being the mind can't express it it's more a disturbance to it it can learn from it it can align to it but that takes maturity and time and experience to get there so we all start from wherever we start so you know there's some puzzle with the way you think or the way you're understanding the way you're communicating or expressing or it's influenced by somebody or some effect is being there that's coming in now the effect if mercury is below the horizon and it's making that conjunction or square 
it's going to be your own way of thinking subjectively coming in affecting your motivation how you're expressing yourself is affecting your motivation but if it's above the horizon it's often out of people and where you think you should be or where you think you fit in and how come i'm not living up to whatever starts putting out where am i coming from i got to get away you can get if you get a negative association to your ic it's affecting everything how what you take in what you put out huge effect so really we're always trying to get out of the negative or the grosser and we started living very grossly and these things play out very grossly developing our intellect who's talking someone's always telling you something someone's not so like someone's saying don't do this or don't do that or someone's saying no come on what do you have to say like different things as a kid but as we grow up this gets sophisticated and for some people anyways and we're trying to extend this further and other people and other things other situations social situations can affect the way we think someone say oh you're really smart someone says you're really stupid and has a social repercussion so mercury any thoughts will always affect your motivation but with this conjunction square or opposition there especially if the opposition that's up on the mid heaven it's opposing the things you think you have to do often diminish where you're coming from diminish your personal integrity kind of people leave home they go for a weekend at a conference and if they go to conference in las vegas what happens in las vegas stays in las vegas if you have an affair whatever nobody knows you're out of work then you're going to come back home and with or without your integrity and you're thinking about it okay so it depends on what sign card and fixed mutable what what all the different factors that affect the motivation will be affected by the way you think and the circumstances and aspects the signs and the houses of of mercury is telling you how you have to, the best ways to think and when you deviate from that it's going to really affect your motivation and how you project in everything you do okay when you take the now when you think of all the charts you have and you have to go you have to go check and see each person's IC and see you start to say, oh look at it oh look at that most astrology does the aspects to the midheaven they don't do them to the IC the midheaven is the most accentuated point of the four points or the ascendant is in the midheaven but I think the IC is the key to understanding it all to seeing the whole picture where someone's coming from what you put out so when you get to Venus if the IC is touching Venus your sense of beauty your sense of self-worth your values your magnetism is going to affect your motivation so your your love your love and your hate your attraction and your repulsion you'll be motivated by attraction and repulsion your choices the good choices the bad choices it's not the IC affecting the Venus it's the Venus choices affecting the way you're motivated people can get really twisted I can't, I can't have that person I'll kill them or nobody can have them or if I can't have the if I can't get this how can this be if you don't like me how can I survive like if you like me wow it's so wonderful we can our Venus can give our sense of self-worth to other people and be tied into other people and that can affect our motivation but sometimes if those people aren't stable or rave, it can really negatively affect, it can really challenge or I see that they weren't real how do I know I'm real when my values are tied up to them when I want to want is tied up to them and whatever values you have and how so for one person it could be taste it could be overindulgence it could be too much of a sweet tooth it could be drinking not being appreciated Venus has all kinds of problems vices and virtues and any one of them as they manifest will directly affect the IC if you have especially if they have that Venus conjunct square opposition the Venus stressful aspect of the IC so if you have that there's I mean if you choose one person to leave them you choose another person to leave them and and you go through five or ten people like this sooner or later your midheaven knows that you're not re that reliable that steady you get judged by it. it begins to affect who you are 
And does it really mean I have to just try and stay with one or make one choice, or do I just keep changing or to go along? There's stress that's going to come from those choice. Venus, the choices we make, the taste, the styles, the daily things we like, the things you want, the things you don't want, the things you can't stand, the people you don't want, the people you don't like, all of these factors are going to affect your motivation. And they're coming in a whole wave, of a river of choices. That river is going to run right down into the IC and flood it. And then you're going to try and, well, with me, or wow, don't you like me, or what's my, like, wow. Um, just thinking of a song by that band called Wham. Um, I'm never going to dance again. Guilty feet ain't got no rhythm. It's just a song. But anyways, the expression was like, if I feel guilty about what's outside of I've been wrong about my choices, wow, it's going to affect what I'm going to try to do about anything. You know, so these end up very deep, profound challenges. And when you get alert to them and you start seeing someone's behavior, you can see early signals or late signals of major depressions, major discontents. If you don't like yourself, why live? If you don't like yourself, why live? Or if you're not going to, never mind why live. If you don't like yourself, something's not working, maybe you can get by with alcohol or drugs. If you can't get by with alcohol or drugs, maybe chocolate and sweets will do it, or the bucket of ice cream, or whatever. Like, even though we often translate our tastes into our habits, into our eating, and Venus has its effect on the mind and the, and the moon. But Venus itself, if it's touching, it really is the values of how beautiful you are, how beautiful you think you are, how how content you are, really, how content you are. And Venus is that, with the squares and conjunctions, it's going to create situations that challenge your contentment, that distract your contentment, that pull you out of your own choosing. So simple things we're talking about, we're looking at energies and the Venus, it gives a very power effect, a powerful, powerful effect for any planet making an aspect to the IC. It's the seeds of any psychotherapy or personal in-depth search or any real transformation. If you don't anchor it to the IC, you're going to have a, a less secured, less anchored, less primal centering, that which wouldn't last as long. This is where astrology sees things in a clearer, better way than a lot of other assessment systems. Psychology is impaired because it's only measuring behavioral factors. Oh, it can work very well. This, this can really elaborate and put in context the factors. But astrology includes, goes from the behavioral, the psychological, the physical, right up to the spiritual. And psychology doesn't quite make it to belief and faith and spiritual things. Okay, so the astrology is adding primal information that's a useful tool for a psychological assessment or any type or a spiritual assessment. What are the challenges for this devotee or for you to be on your path to be a disciple to get to enlightenment? But these are the obstacles you would have to go through. Meanwhile, in the world, we're making these choices. I got to have this much money. I got to have that money. Oh my goodness, I lost money. Oh, I got to get more money to buy more. I, it could be about money, it could be love, sex, appreciation, taste. Or even if it's an artistic quality, uh, it is going to be a struggle to express it. Um, someone may be a great, a great musician, but they have on and off struggles with having an instrument or with being able to afford one, or just, I'm not sure they're affected by whoever they're loving or not loving. And you end up with some people playing music that's playing the blues because of a broken heart for years. But then you have someone who's happy and liking themselves. Incredible radiant things come out that can be sharing or other things. So this, this, that it affects, we're watching that it affects your motive. And as soon as it's affecting your integrity and your motive, if it's affecting your integrity badly, it's going to affect your motivation badly and what you're going to do badly. And as soon as it hits that I see, it starts projecting out to try and prove to the midheaven that you can overcome that or make something of that. 